Internet, my name is Lave, and Happy New Year to you all. I hope you had a good one. I'm very excited to be back and talking about the first film that I watched in the cinemas in 2019, which was The Favourite, which is directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, who's a quirky director. His other films have been a bit eccentric, to say the least. I have reviewed them if you want to check them out. I've reviewed The Lobster and The Killing of a Sacred Deer. I'll put links down in the description. His latest is a period drama set in the early 18th century, with Queen Anne sitting on the throne of England, struggling to run the country which is at war with France due to her ill health. So her close friend and confident Lady Sarah looks after her and practically runs the kingdom in her stead, until her position is threatened when Abigail, a new servant, arrives and rises through the ranks to become the Queen's new favourite. So let's start with the performances because there's a lot of Oscar buzz surrounding this one, especially when it comes to Olivia Colman's character, Queen Anne. Her character is kind of reminiscent of Helena Bond Bonham Carter's Queen of Hearts from the Alice in Wonderland films, except this one is a bit more grounded. I say that very loosely because it's hard to say any characters are grounded in a Yorgos Lanthimos films. They they tend to be kind of set in an alternate reality or certainly in, have a fancy element to them. But for a Yorgos Lanthimos film, this Queen Anne is quite grounded. She's prone to mood swings. She can lose her temper one minute and then be overcome with sadness the next, which is explored. And I actually felt a lot of sympathy for her. And I understand why she needs these two other characters in her life, as well as these 17 other rabbits, which is explored. And as I say, you kind of understand why she is the way she is. And then you've got Rachel Weisz, who is another national treasure for me. The last few films that I've seen her in, she's been outstanding, and she is again in this. She's playing Lady Sarah Marlborough, who has a very intimate relationship with the Queen. She's her current favourite. My opinion on her character fluctuated throughout the film. I kept asking myself, why is she doing what she's doing? Is she just power hungry and is doing it to get more power? Or... Is she doing it to keep sending her husband away to war because she's heavily involved in politics and keeps insisting that they keep the war with France going? Or does she genuinely care for the Queen and, and love her? It's all open to interpretation and is ambiguous and is all part of the fun. Then we've got Emma Stone as Abigail, who's lost her title as a lady and is determined to get it back by any means necessary. And she really goes for it. And I mean that in terms of the character and Emma Stone's performance. I often call out dodgy accents in my reviews, but I'm happy to say that Emma Stone's English accent in this is flawless, which meant that I could just sit back and really enjoy enjoy her performance. She's also terrific in this film. I think all three of them are, and I think the Oscar buzz is warranted. I also really liked Nicholas Holt, who's playing this frustrated politician, trying to worm his way up the power ladder as well. You've also got Mark Gattis, who's playing Lady Sarah's husband, who I mentioned earlier. But all of the other characters are sort of minor players when it comes to the larger game. But that's not to say that they don't have some terrific confrontations, verbal confrontations. This film has got a terrific screenplay with some wickedly funny bits of dialogue but it all comes down to the three main leads and and who wins and and who who you're rooting for my interpretation of the way that it ends i don't want to spoil anything but i think that the way it ends it suggests that nobody wins and like queen anne's rabbits they're substitutes for the real thing. But going back to the director Yorgos Lanthimos, I think most people would describe his films as different and this one is different to his other films, his English language films like The Lobster and Killing of a Sacred Deer. The characters in this don't speak in that deadpan, monotone, emotionless way that the characters do in his other films. This being a period drama, they speak all prim and proper, but this is still very quirky, especially in the way it has been shot with distorted fisheye lens effects, whip pans and low POV shots. This is unlike any other period drama I've seen. Downton Abbey, this is not. This is also true when it comes to the sound design. In the same way that Dunkirk had that ticking bomb effect. This film does something similar with this noise that every now and again goes and also in one scene in particular we're watching something on screen but we're hearing the sounds of the scene which is coming after it which just adds to that uneasy feeling like we get in all of his other films. 
this is a really kind of like squirm in your seat kind of funny. I never thought I'd see so many jokes about masturbation in a period drama. So it's it's completely different, but different in a different way, if that makes sense. So that's my thoughts on the favourite and pause the video if you want to take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. Truth be told, it took a little while for this film to get going for me, but then there was so much hype surrounding it. I was expecting big things straight away, but once it did get going, I really enjoyed it. I don't think it's my favourite Yorgos Lanthimos film. I think I did enjoy The Killing of a Sacred Deer more than this, but still a great start to my 2019. So thanks very much for checking out this video. I've been really busy doing little things of late, so my posting hasn't been that regular, but things are getting back to normal now, so I'll be going to the cinema a lot more regularly and bringing you as many reviews as I can. So keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you can, give it a like and don't forget to share the lave. Subscribe.